Tonight, the boss of Dubai International, DXP, one of the world's busiest airports, is slamming governments for not having a more complete roadmap to restart global travel. You'll be aware Dubai is one of the three major airports in the Gulf, which is the new crossroads of the world. And last year saw its passenger numbers plummet by 70 percent from 2019. DXP cut its staff, it closed facilities, terminals and concourse, and it moved fast towards contactless check-in. Now the CEO, Paul Griffiths, tells me no one has given in the industry has given any guidance about how to move forward. So I needed to know what's needed for the plans for the future. I think the fundamental issue, there's a massive global disconnect between the measures that the aviation industry have taken to combat the pandemic. And there isn't a clear roadmap in any country almost to the, to the way back to personal mobility, which is the thing that more than four billion people across the world have been missing under various forms of lockdown. Now, the thing is, in any other forum, surely we've got a whole plethora of medical experts who are saying where we need to be in order for travel to be resumed on a global basis. Now, why hasn't any country, to my knowledge, said, right, if we can achieve those particular parameters, which can be vaccination rates, control of the spread, death rate coming down, hospitalization coming down, if we can get to that point by a particular date, then travel to these countries is going to be possible. And I think that's the problem. Lots of countries are talking about the, the mechanism, but no one's given a date. No one said it's these countries and no one has given the industry anything to which they can plan for a safe reopening of travel. Isn't that a process that's underway as the sands continue to shift. I'm thinking of two examples. Firstly, the UK with its traffic light system, which is coming into force. And secondly, the EU saying it will allow US uh, uh, citizens to travel there this summer. Isn't that the sort of roadmap we're talking about? Well, it's a map, but sadly, it doesn't have any roads on it, as far as I can see. The difficulty, of course, is that no countries are being identified uh, and no one is actually saying what the parameters are going to be by what date. Now, you talk to any airport or airline executive around the world, you can't plan an operation on that basis. But if we could have some sort of guidelines agreed with governments around the world as to what criteria need to be achieved to restart global travel so we can put a timeline against that, then I think the world would be a better place. We'd all have much more hope that we were going to get somewhere over the summer, maybe, when things have been achieved against those medical benchmarks that I think everyone's identified as very good ways forward. If we look at the way Dubai is now uh, performing, uh, your your dominant carrier, Emirates, is is slowly but surely sort of rebuilding its route network again. Uh, as yet, are other carriers coming back? Yes, we are uh, about sixty seven percent of the carriers that were operating before the pandemic are now still operating to Dubai. So we've seen very strong support. The Capacity and the frequency might not be there, but at least the presence is there and it's very easy to ramp up from that perspective. We're operating at about 20% of total capacity, but we have very, very short fuse plans, less than seven days to open up much more of our infrastructure because our estimation is that the recovery will come incredibly quickly when it actually arrives. The big unknown, I think, across the world is when that date for safe travel is going to be upon us. And that's where the hesitation, I think, is understandably across most right. of the markets that we serve. If we look at IATA's travel pass, because the integrity of documents such as vaccination certificates is going to be crucial. Um, and so far, turning up with a little piece of cardboard issued by one authority or another won't cut the mustard. How do you imagine this working in practice? 
I think one of the encouraging announcements was earlier on when Microsoft, Apple, Google and uh, Salesforce all said that they were going to collaborate because most of us now are storing credit cards and debit cards on our phones. And if that system is secure enough to uh, be able to handle all of the transactions we make financially, couldn't we use that infrastructure to simply get a red or green from an authority that says the documentation we're using to travel with is valid and our biometric and medical information is stored in that way? You don't need to cede control. All you are simply seeking to do, which is I think what the IR to Travel Pass solution is trying to achieve, is a tokenized way of saying, is this customer um, able to travel? Does he meet all the criteria? That doesn't need to disclose personal information, just give a red or green.